Good morning. The Secretary General and the Prime Minister will make short statements and then we'll have time for just a couple of questions. Secretary General. Prime Minister Fitzo, there, uh, Robert, uh, welcome to NATO headquarters. It's great to see you uh, again. And uh, congratulations on your appointment as uh, uh, Prime Minister. It's uh, great to work together with you again. We actually met for the first time when uh, you and I were both uh, Prime Ministers in our two countries uh, back in 2006. And since then we have worked together in different uh, uh, capacities. And it's great to then be able to work together with you again. Slovakia is a strong uh, ally. Uh, you host one of our multinational uh, NATO battle groups. You have deployed <coughs> forces to Latvia and you will um, invest 2% of GDP uh, in defense this year. <coughs> this shows uh, Slovakia's clear commitment to NATO and NATO is deeply committed to Slovakia's security. Today in our meeting we discussed uh, Russia's war against Ukraine and the situation on the battlefield. There are no signs that Putin is preparing for peace. Instead, the Kremlin is preparing for a long and grinding war. Putin has put the Russian economy on a war footing. He is ramping up weapons production and he is becoming uh, more reliant on uh, China, Iran and North Korea for weapons. NATO is not party to the conflict, but we are supporting Ukraine's right to self-defense enshrined in the UN Charter. I welcome Slovakia's support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Prime Minister, I'm pleased that you have confirmed that uh, your important humanitarian aid will continue and that will keep contributing to NATO's comprehensive assistance package for Ukraine. I also welcome that uh, defense industry cooperation on a commercial basis between Slovakia and Ukraine will continue and that the crucial repair hub uh, in Slovakia will remain uh, operational. Stopping military assistance to Kiev would prolong the war, uh, not end it. I welcome President Biden's clear commitment to Ukraine and his administration's urgent effort to provide Ukraine with much needed aid. European uh, Union leaders will today also discuss launching membership negotiations with Kiev and additional economic support for Ukraine. If Putin wins in Ukraine, there is a real risk that his aggression will not end there. Our support is not charity, it is an investment in our security. In our meeting today, we also discussed further bolstering our own deterrence and defense. Tomorrow, a long-planned US missile defense base in Poland will become operational. It will boost allies' ability to defend against the threats of ballistic uh, missiles, particularly from the Middle East. We look forward to integrating the facility into NATO's ballistic missile defense shield in the near future. This is an important step for transatlantic security. So once again, Prime Minister, welcome. Uh, there, Robert, it's great to have you here at the NATO headquarters. Please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Secretary General. First of all, uh, as I have said uh, during our meeting, thank you very much for your performance. Of course, uh, we know each other for a long time. First time we met as Prime Ministers of Norway and, uh, and Slovakia, so uh, I am very happy that uh, today I had a chance to exchange views with you. Dirians, you know very well that before elections in Slovakia, I was described as a devil, that uh, my government would change uh, everything. In spite of the fact that we publicly declared that uh, the Slovak government, in case I would be the prime minister, will not change anything in the foreign policy. Of course, it uh, doesn't mean in practice that we will agree with everything. And I hope that uh, our discussion today confirmed that uh, we have some uh, sovereign opinions and different opinions that our allies uh, have. First of all, uh, I would like to declare publicly that uh, we do not see any reasons to change uh, the policy of my government towards NATO. Slovakia is a member state of NATO, and of course I understand that we have to fulfill uh, commitments and we have to respect the uh, rules of this, uh, of this club. I informed the uh, Secretary General that uh, the financial situation in Slovakia is, is, is very critical 
and that it is impossible to imagine that we will spend more than 2% of GDP on uh, military expenditures. At the same time, uh, we would like to spend 20% out of this money on modernization of Slovak army because uh, uh, the present uh, status of the Slovak army is not very, very good. At the same time, I informed the Secretary General that uh, we need some uh, investments uh, on so-called uh, secondary impacts of war in Ukraine, and we will fight the Secretary General for some money today in Brussels uh, during the summit of uh, European Union, because we believe that countries like Hungary, Slovakia and Poland uh, could have some extra money uh, to reconstruct bridges and roads very close to, uh, to, to Ukraine. Yes, it is true that Slovakia will continue in humanitarian aid to Ukraine. I informed the Secretary General that uh, in January I will meet the Prime Minister of Ukraine, uh, Mr. Shmihal, and the list of products that uh, Ukraine needs at the moment uh, is uh, prepared. It means that uh, we can provide uh, Ukraine some equipments to demine territory of Ukraine. We can help Ukraine with the energy, with the gas. I mean, uh, we are doing what we promised before the elections. Yes, it is true that uh, we stopped any military uh, assistance uh, to uh, Ukraine. We will not send anything from uh, state uh, storages from the Slovak army. But as I have said openly uh, before elections, uh, we will not block commercial cooperation. Uh, I am very happy that the Minister of Defense of Slovakia is Robert Kaliniak because he is very enthusiastic. He has um, a very, I would say, uh, interesting plans how to increase military production in Slovakia, of course, on a commercial basis. So this is something uh, we will not uh, block. Finally, I would like to say that uh, we exchanged uh, with the Secretary General our opinions as far as the situation in Ukraine is concerned. And this is a topic where we have different opinions. I openly declared that uh, we do not believe in my government in military solution in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, we really miss any peace initiative, and it doesn't matter whether it is, whether it is uh, in the European Union or it is in, in NATO, and uh, frankly speaking, uh, we cannot imagine that the war will continue the next 10 years without any results. The only result will be maybe hundreds and hundreds of thousands of uh, victims of this war on uh, both sides of the conflict. Uh, so uh, we really do not see any military solution. So uh, I hope that this uh, different opinion concerning very important issue for NATO will not uh, complicate very constructive uh, dialogue uh, that we have as the Slovak government and, uh, at, and, and NATO. So, uh, dear Jens, thank you very much. It was very, very, I mean, uh, pragmatic. I like that it was very unofficial, I mean, uh, meeting because uh, we are too old and too experienced to have formal meetings and to have formal speeches. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have time for just a couple of questions. We'll start with uh, Pravda in the second row here, please. Thank you very much, Andrei Matyshek, David Pravda. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, uh, it was said, and Mr. Prime Minister said that, that Slovakia stopped the state military aid for, for Ukraine. You said that stopping military aid means that the war will be prolonged. So, of course, every country, definitely like Slovakia, has a right for a sovereign, sovereign decision. But from your perspective, if every member state of NATO would stop sending state military aid to Ukraine, would it mean that Ukraine would lose and Russia would win? And the question is for Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, you said that you are going to meet Prime Minister Shmihal in January, as I'm correct. So are you going to visit uh, Ukraine or Mr. Shmihal will visit Slovakia? Thank you. So NATO allies are providing an unprecedented level of uh, military support to Ukraine, and I'm con confident that that will uh, uh, continue. Um, I'm also confident that the United States will... Uh, 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 reach a conclusion, the, uh, the, the, the process, the, dis the discussions which are going on in the, in the Congress, that uh, they will end with a, with a conclusion where the United States continues to provide uh, military support to Ukraine, as also European allies uh, are doing in different uh, ways, bilaterally and also through the European uh, Union. 
Then, of course, different allies provide different types of support. And uh, I welcome uh, that the Prime Minister uh, has stated that uh, uh, the uh, humanitarian aid will uh, continue, the support for uh, NATO's comprehensive assistance package uh, will continue, and also uh, that, of course, uh, the Slovak defence industry is important in providing on commercial uh, basis uh, supplies uh, to Ukraine, which is uh, vital for uh, Ukraine. And then also uh, uh, Slovakia plays a key role uh, uh, in hosting a hub for maintenance uh, of equipment, um, which is used uh, by the Ukrainian forces uh, uh, to uh, fight against the invading Russian uh, uh, army. So uh, the most important issue is that uh, NATO allies will continue to provide support and uh, uh, allies provide different types of support and Slovakia will uh, do their part in uh, supporting the comprehensive assistance package and uh, through uh, cooperation between the defence industries. Thank you for your question. Uh, first of all, I'd like to add something that I informed the Secretary General that we urgently need in Slovakia a new anti-missile system after S-300 uh, was sent uh, to, to Ukraine. At this moment, um, we have on the territory of Slovakia only two systems, one from Italy and one from uh, Germany, but uh, those systems are not uh, enough effective to protect uh, what we need uh, to protect. I understand the answer of uh, Secretary General that uh, uh, this is issue that is very urgent, not only for Slovakia, but for whole NATO, for all member states of, uh, of NATO. Anyway, uh, I need to point out this once again, we need cooperation in this field. Otherwise, uh, uh, we cannot guarantee what we should guarantee on the territory of Slovakia. As far as the meeting with uh, Prime Minister Šmihal is concerned, uh, there is the agreement that uh, uh, there will be the session of the government in the eastern part of Slovakia. It will be the last week in January. And uh, we will meet with the prime minister on the borders, directly on the borders between Slovakia and, uh, and uh, Ukraine. I think that there are topics uh, that are relevant to the place we are going to meet because uh, there is plan to open, uh, I mean, uh, new possibilities to cross uh, borders between uh, Ukraine and, uh, and Slovakia. There are some plans how to cooperate in energetic systems. So I think this is the best place to meet uh, directly, directly on, on, on borders. Thank you. Last question to TA3. Oh, sorry. Excuse me, please. Not a debate on the Ukraine side because this is our proposal. But uh, uh, as I understand uh, from the content of uh, the discussion with the Prime Minister Shmiha, he is ready uh, to meet me in January, so we are proposing the end of January. Thank you. Last question to TA3 in the second row as well, please. Coming to you on the other side. Oh, sorry. Uh, good morning, Secretary General, Prime Minister. Thank you very much for your remarks. I have a follow-up follow -up question to uh, Secretary General. Uh, basically, what do you expect to happen in Ukraine in uh, next year? Uh, you have mentioned President Joe Biden. We know that the financial and military aid in uh, American Congress is kind of stuck right now, so it's uh, uh, kind of stressful to Ukrainian uh, people. And also, I know that you have uh, conducted a trip to Saudi Arabia. So was that also a part of solution or something that could help Ukraine? Or if you could just elaborate, what was that trip about? Thank you very much. I can start by saying a few words about my visit to Saudi Arabia, and then I will say some words about uh, Ukraine. Also, first, I just returned from a visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, that's the first visit ever of a NATO Secretary General to the Kingdom. Uh, and it was uh, uh, an important uh, visit because uh, Saudi Arabia is a leading uh, nation in the Arabic world, in the Muslim world. And uh, there is a potential, a great, a huge potential for um, increased uh, cooperation between NATO and uh, Saudi Arabia on issues like maritime security, freedom of navigation. We have seen the attacks on uh, commercial vessels uh, over the last uh, days and weeks. 
um, outside the coast of Yemen. Um, then uh, I believe we can work to more together in fighting uh, terrorism uh, and also uh, on um, uh, other issues like, for instance, uh, uh, protecting uh, critical undersea infrastructure. So there are uh, different areas where we should explore and look into how Saudi Arabia and NATO can work more closely together to uh, address uh, common uh, challenges and uh, threats. So therefore, I'm also pleased that um, His Royal Highness uh, Prince Khalid bin uh, Salman, the Defence Minister, uh, uh, accepted my invitation to come to NATO uh, early next year. We will sit down and, and talk more in detail about how we can further uh, strengthen the uh, cooperation between Saudi Arabia and uh, NATO. Um, uh, in addition to my talks uh, uh, with uh, the Defence Minister, I also had um, useful meetings in the Foreign Ministry uh, with the Chief of Defence, uh, with the Saudi Arabian Military Industries and the National Defence uh, University. Um, I also had a good discussion with the Secretary General of the Gulf Corporation. So this was a, a productive uh, and useful meeting and shows that for NATO it's important to address a wide range of challenges and work with partners and friends uh, in different parts of the world. Then on Ukraine, I think we have to just accept uh, that wars are by nature unpredictable. Um, so no one can tell exactly where we are in a year from now. Uh, but what we can say is that um, the only way to reach a just and um, lasting solution is to convince President Putin that he will not win on the battlefield. And the only way to ensure that President Putin realizes that he is not winning on the battlefield is to continue to support Ukraine. Uh, because you have to remember what this is. This is a war aggression. Uh, one nation, Russia, invades another nation in blatant violation of international law, but also in blatant violation of an agreement that Russia signed in 1994 when Ukraine accepted to uh, give up all its nuclear weapons. Ukraine was a big nuclear power and they accepted to, uh, to, to give up all those weapons. Uh, but uh, as part of that agreement, Russia and other countries signed that they were, that they were guaranteeing uh, uh, Ukraine's international recognized borders. These borders are now violated. NATO is not party to the conflict, but we uh, help Ukraine to uphold the right to, to self-defense, a right which is enshrined in the UN uh, Charter. Um, I think also we need to realize that, yes, we all uh, wanted more uh, uh, progress. Uh, we hoped for uh, more uh, territorial gains by the Ukrainians uh, through the summer and, and through the offensive they launched uh, early in the summer. Uh, but at the same time, we need to remember where we started. When this war started in February last year, most experts believed that uh, uh, Kiev would be uh, under Russian control within days, and the Russian actually landed uh, special forces on the airport just outside uh, uh, Kiev with the aim of taking Kiev. Um, uh, they also uh, believed that uh, Ukraine would collapse within weeks. That didn't happen. First, the Ukrainians were able to push back uh, and defend, and they liberated the north uh, around Kiev, uh, the east uh, in Kharkiv, and then the south uh, around Kherson. So the Ukrainians have already liberated 50% of the territory that Russia uh, controlled in the beginning of the war. That's a huge achievement. Ukraine has uh, prevailed as a sovereign independent nation in Europe, and they have inflicted heavy losses on Russia, more than 300,000 casualties, uh, thousands of uh, armored vehicles, and hundreds of planes, and Ukrainians have been able to push the Ukrainian Navy uh, uh, away from the eastern part, no, the western part of the Black Sea, so they're now able to export uh, grain uh, uh, throughout the Black Sea. These are big and important achievements, and they are actually imposing heavy costs on Russia, which I continue to believe is the only way uh, to create the conditions for a lasting negotiated solution. I would like to have a lasted, uh, lasting, just uh, uh, negotiated solution, but the only way to get there is to uh, uh, strengthen the Ukrainians on the battlefield. The stronger the position uh, of the Ukrainians is on the battlefield, uh, the stronger their negotiating hand will be at the negotiating table. That's all we have time for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.